Here we go. What's up, New England? The Room Podcast, Wednesday night. What's up? Steve Domenico. Tommy Shayhood. Here we are again. What's up, my friend? Same bat channel, same bat place. <laughs> How are you? Very good. Nice to see you. I'm doing very well today. Good. Um, good. We had last week off. Yep, yep. Um, you know what? It was a good idea mm -hmm. having last week off. Okay. I did an interview with Mikey Antidormi, who was fighting for CES mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. this past Saturday. Yep, saw some of that. And I did it on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and the band was rehearsing. Oh, shit. So it was kind of overlapping. It yep. wasn't terrible. It was kind of sure, halfway yeah, I don't, through I it. I don't really think I heard too much of it, but yeah, I didn't listen we, to the whole you thing. Know, it, you know, you're hearing this like, sure. garage band in the back. <laughs> okay, you know. fuckers. Antidormi was laughing. I bet. Yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a funny shit. He's like, yeah, it's yeah. good. So he won. He had a knockout for his uh, good. pro debut. So shout out to... Mike Anti Dormy mm -hmm. for uh, that uh, big win Saturday night. Pro CES. debut. Um, so, uh, anything exciting happened to you over the weekend? Um, what the fuck was up this weekend? No, not a lot. I kind of some of my plans fell through. I wanted to go see some music at Great Woods in Mansfield, and no one wanted to do anything. So then I didn't end up doing anything. So you didn't do much, just hang nope, out. It was yeah. beautiful, though, wasn't yeah, it? it? The yeah, weather started it was. Uh, getting cool, mm -hmm. uh, cool, oh, yeah. cool off. So I went to uh, my friend's 40th birthday party, Gary, what's up, um, Saturday what's up? night. And uh, it was hot as balls when we went there. Fucking storm central, lightning, and then cooled off, and it's been cool since. Yeah, the rest yep. is history. Yeah. So, uh, Tommy. Uh, I don't know, you, you know, just a percentage of uh, the New England community knows that I've fallen off the wagon oh, with, uh, you know, the weed. <sighs> uh, it's not an everyday thing. It's yeah. not all the time. Mm -hmm. But I've have partake more than you were. Th you know, I went my three months or so and then uh, I started, stretch. you know, taking a little bit here and there. Yeah, enjoy a but little anyway, more. Um, Saturday I went out with buddies. Mm -hmm. We went to uh, see a band and I took some mushrooms oh my god on saturday how you, old am i you scandalous and i took some mushrooms my buddy had I, and we had a fucking ball yeah you were you're feeling i good. also smoked some pot too Yo, and you drank got a to. bunch of beers when you take mushrooms uh a friend once told me uh you gotta smoke weed with it <clears throat> yeah it kicks it in yeah it's all about it you know and then yeah you know. and and then after the fact, uh, you know, you smoke a little more later, you start going back up. It's like a little roller coaster. Well, yeah. So Saturday, took the mushrooms, and we had a great time. And it wasn't like, it didn't hit me like times before sure. when you're just sitting there and you know it's coming, and all of a sudden it pops up and lights kind of dimmer and kind of uh, get more uh, prettier. Yeah. And then you know you're in for the ride. Sure. It didn't happen this time. Um, it was, was just like loud music and stuff. Yeah, I was at a band. That'll and do we it. Kind of got like into it. Yeah. And the UFC was on. I was kind of oh, yeah. going in between that. Yep. And CBS and, uh, was on at you that know, time too. Hanging out with my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I danced. Yeah. I fucking danced, bro. That'll do it. That'll, that'll put your dancing shoes too. on. I do pretty good. Uh, you probably I'm thought you were good. flexible for an old man. Oh, yeah. I was doing the twist. I was down on my ass sheesh, almost, man. Sheesh. My fucking thighs hurt today. <laughs> my hammies in my thighs. What did you really do I'm that night? I used to doing that. <laughs> Stop. That. So anyway, uh, yeah, I had a great cool. weekend. Cool. Sunday, um, it continued. I had Sunday off. I slept till two in the afternoon. A little bit of recovery. And then we went to see a band outside, an ACDC tribute band. Oh, sick. Outside, who made who? They were fucking they crushed fabulous. It. And what happened there was, I had a couple of beers and uh, took another hit of a pot, and uh, mushrooms. I think kind of sure a little came residual back effects. A little bit. Yeah. It was good. That's good. That's so great. That sounds great. I, yeah, I was in bed by 9.30 Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Yep, recovering. And uh, I had Monday off, so I went to see my daughter. My daughter is now in Bismarck, fucking South Dakota. Oh, jeez. With her boyfriend. She okay. flew there to, for a week. Okay. So, uh, I was going to say, like, I hung out vacation. with her Monday. So I had a great weekend, man. Dude, I had a sounds full awesome. friggin' weekend. Yeah, that sounds full. Usually I don't have that much to tell you, right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Usually you do something fun something, uh, a day. but, you know, not taking mushrooms and... No, that's fun. that's exciting. Uh, Dancing, yeah, right. That's fun. Scaring people and shit, man. <laughs> Were they? Um, now this is going to turn into a drug pot, uh, episode. But, right, uh, whatever. We got uh, a few minutes. Yeah. Um, were they actual Nick shroom Hila mushrooms? Uh, yeah, they were actual yeah, cool grown in shit. The piece of the mushrooms and those are yeah. Better. And we took. Uh, I don't know. I took a few. Yep. Uh, a couple know, of course night. Yeah, I took a stem and a cap, yep. and then you know, Just chew it right up. Like a oh yeah, yeah, fucking cotton mouth uh, foaming. Hate that foaming at the mouth. That's how I like it in bit. tea form. You know, I, I'll make the big pot yeah. of tea myself. And well, my buddy, uh, my other buddy, uh, eating candy bars. Sure. You have them. Yeah. You have yep. them candy bars yep. also. 
Yeah. Yep. I've had them before. Um, prefer the regular mushrooms. So, um, just, uh, you know, I don't want to go into a drug fucking <laughs> podcast here. We, we should dedicate an episode but to mushrooms that. Mushrooms and uh, weed was the, and rock and roll was the yeah. theme of the weekend. There's, uh, it was gorgeous. There's no weekend. better. Yeah, right. So, uh, no this weekend, perfect. this weekend, just time we got. Uh, we got about five minutes. So this weekend, um, we are playing our recital oh, nice. on Sunday. Yeah, so I'm playing a couple that. of songs in front of moms and dads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys going to be going moms nuts. Moms and dads. They're going to be like, are these the teachers? There's, yeah. Who are these? The, we call ourselves the nobodies. Nice. So That's the nobodies are up. Nice. So we're going to play a couple of songs. We're doing a knocking on heaven's door mm-hmm. uh, oh, and uh, a Tom Petty song. And uh, Good. You're going to rock God out. God be with us. Yeah. You're going to be... Uh... So tomorrow's lessons and last practice cool. before you know For the big we gig. play we play like ten songs at practice sure. you know yeah uh, but only two of them are good enough to play mm-hmm. in front of me you, you can only manage two of them all together all the way through yeah all together <laughs> all the way through it's fun. ending at the same time yeah you think yeah. there's gonna be any uh, hiccups in the song as you go not by me <laughs> not confidence by me. confidence uh, yeah That's good. well I'm I'm running the show yeah bro. you're keeping the beat I have to be uh, I have to be the, the the guy that fills in the gaps yeah. you know what I mean we're, be, we're just learning you're here you're gonna be spinning your sticks you like Tommy I mean? Lee and nah, shit nah I won't be doing that <laughs> in no, front no, of all the no, parents no, no, no. I don't wanna scare anyone poke <laughs> you eyes take your shirt out off and I don't shit. wanna poke any eyes out I'm fucking I'm you, not, guys should, you guys should all take your shirts off and do it for that just fucking spell to nobody's. There is like five of us. Yeah. How many? How many? Is yeah, six. All kind of like the same age guys. Yeah. No. Well, um, uh, I think. Oh yeah, one of them's a, a retired state trooper, oh, Rhode Island state trooper. Nice. He is. Um, he's probably about eight to ten years older than me. Mm-hmm. Oh, Definitely geez. in his late sixties. Okay. Um, but yeah, we, we cool. have a good time. It's cool. like you know, drink a couple of beers. That's what it's all about. Play some. Uh, play some rock and roll. Some, a little rock and roll. Yeah. You know what I mean. Very cool. Very yeah, cool. So uh, I think the next song we're going to learn is uh, play that funky music. Uh, you know, who's that? Casey in the Sunshine Band. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. Um, yes, but so many people have remade it oh, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if that's original or what? Yeah. Cool. That's a cool song. And so yeah, I'm sci- excited about Sunday. You know, it's for the kids. Yeah. It's mostly for the kids. Yeah, and the kids you'll see are all really proud of their but stuff. But we're kind of starting off the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're playing our two songs and yeah. I'm pff, drinking beer and yeah. eating hot dogs Bingo. after that. <laughs> hot dogs. So could... Is that what they're serving? It's outside. Yeah. Nice. Little, it's outside. A so cookout. It's, it's a cookout nice. outside of the bar. It's a it's a bar. Yeah. Um, that have bands inside and oh, outside. Oh, but cool. We happen, the music studio happened to rent out the the bar that day. We oh. did it last year. It was packed. Yeah. But it was inside. Okay. This time, hopefully, the weather's nice this Sunday, and it's outside, and uh, just gonna be Beautiful. drinking beers yeah. and yeah. listening to some. Uh, so was it? it was uh, School of Rock. Some School yeah. of Rock. Happened. Nice. That's, so that's cool, good, man. Yeah, you guys are like the teachers. Fucking yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you, well, my the guitar player, one of the guitar players that we're playing with is the, uh, the instructor. Oh yeah. One of the guitar instructors cool. there, and he, two of the guys playing with are his students. Oh, nice. And the bass player is actually my drum instructor. He's playing bass. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. So I'm his guy. So these are all, you're all just like the, we're all the students. team. Yeah, you're all a team. Yeah, we're yeah. all students. That's cool. And the cool thing about the, ba- my ba- the bass player, who, who's the, my drum instructor, is he's not, you know, he's learning the bass mm-hmm. now, too. So it's, yep. it's kind of cool. Very good. Very you know good. what I mean? So he's not like, you know, we're like fucking, <laughs> not slapping you know it I mean? around. Yeah, we're all kind of learning the songs cool. and figuring it out. So it's, and they're all it's songs good. that you like and stuff. So Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So. Very cool, rock and roll, man. Uh, so with that said, man, sorry to bore everyone, but Not boring. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, they want to hear about our lives. We have Nick Haler coming on from uh, Cage Titans. Going to be talking about Cage, a little Cage Titan sixty yeah. um, behind the scenes, all the stuff that goes into the social media and uh, putting out them fabulous, fabulous clips and videos and all that stuff that gets the fighters out there and uh, kind of promotes them all over. You know, it's not just Instagram. They have TikTok. Not so much. Uh, you know, they and that guy, Nick, Twitch. crushes it. Yeah, that, he's got, seems like the good production team over there right now, making that all happen. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a crew behind him. Yep. You know what I mean? Yup, yup. So we'll have him on, and uh, we'll talk about, uh, you know, the inner workings of uh, Cage Titan social media. Maybe he'll give us some dirt like on Paul there before we have him on. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. You know, I did say... Ask if they wanted to be on at the same time, but Nick kind of wants to just more promote the sure. Instagram. Yeah, he's like fuck that guy. But Nick's also saying I wouldn't get a fucking word in right. if I was. Oh on yeah, he mic. knows. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's like fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck. I need to give me my own fifteen minutes, man. <laughs> fuck this shit. So, yep. Um, let me message message him. We got a minute. See if uh, he's ready. Uh, 
uh, and this is the first time Nick is on as far as I had him on like pre-COVID when I didn't have um, the video mm -hmm. in. He yep. was just in phone call. Okay. And this is before he actually worked for um, for Cage Titans. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he does. He's good. He does stuff for um, you know, his own business. Uh, he's a photographer also, him and his wife. So, okay. Uh, is, is, what's up? Is there people fucking people place chatting? Oh, they, oh, that's they're talking about drums. That's fucking. <laughs> wants me to play a fifteen minute fucking song. Stairway denied. Oh, All right, let me call Nick. Oh, so they're watching from that's uh, they're watching from YouTube. Yeah, it's chat YouTube chat. Fucking awesome. Nick Haler. Hi guys. What's going on, my man? Yo, what's up? What's going on with you guys? What are you man? doing? Taking a are you outside your house or you're taking a walk down uh through the park or something? No, so this is in my backyard. My wife yeah, uh, down, is like a landscape designer, Just so, so she put in like this whole new porch and this skylight thing over the hammock. And my front screen is cracked. I'm not like you're not tripping and I'm not magical. <laughs> well, we were just talking about shrooms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um you know, Nick, uh, sorry to say, you remember how proud you were of me of uh, getting healthy and quitting smoking and <laughs> and uh, stuff like that? I, I fell off the wagon a little bit, Nick. And and when, when I seen you at Cage Titan 60, 60, you said something to me. He goes, oh, you you like, oh, you're looking good, man. You're all healthy. Yep. I didn't have the heart <laughs> to tell you that I was stoned out of my mind when you said that to hey, me. Hey, you can be both. <laughs> Kind of had a feeling, but you know what, dude? I, I did the same thing right around the same time uh, you quit the uh, Devil's Lettuce. I put down the booze. I stopped drinking beer every night, mm -hmm. and I just felt such like a kind of a kinship because, uh, you know, it's tough to give up something that you like and sure. that, you know, you don't, it don't feel like it's doing much harm to you, but you feel like you need to switch up something, and sometimes that one thing can make such a difference, and I'm not saying it was all because of weed, man. I don't really know anything about what's going on in your day-to-day, -day, but I've noticed just over the last year, and it's not just you, it's uh, everybody in the media scene has been putting out excellent content and working so hard showing so much present at all the shows giving love to a lot of fighters uh yeah man i'm just uh, i'm really happy about the space that our community is in right now and uh Hell yeah. i'm really happy to be back on the show after so many years man it's a really cool trip i appreciate all the nice things you guys say about my work and about the team's work but yeah i definitely do have a production team behind me uh, mm -hmm. shout outs to ed and raf who dropped that, who put together and shot the uh, video we dropped today, the recap videos. They, uh, you know, do it every time. And also special happy birthday to our head photographer, Jacob Taylor. It's his birthday today. Oh, nice. uh, all the birthday? photo albums are dropped today, so guys can stop crying to me about it. <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, so, so Ed uh, and Raph are my just teammates. Just to make this clear to everybody, my last name is Hyler, not Haler. <laughs> Hyler. And that's the way I pronounce it. Of course. Hyler. Well, you say everything Hyler. wrong. Hyler. Yeah, you say everything wrong. I, I, yeah, I, I pronounce my own name wrong. So okay. it's all, Well, you know. the only people that get it right are German people and sometimes Brazilians. So yeah. I'm not mad at it, but it's just like, I think it's like a troll at this point. Like everybody's <laughs> just like, he's just Nick Ayla. We're not calling him by his right name. Fuck oh, yeah. that. <laughs> well, uh, no one ever gets my last name right. They always say it's Shahood or all that. So yeah. I always you don't even correct them anymore anyway, you know? Yep. Oh, also, homeboy, oh dude, you've been an awesome add to this show. I, oh, I thanks, love man. Back and forth. Uh -huh. I also, dude, he's been. It's great to have to see Steve be able to bounce off somebody and oh, yeah. have a conversation with somebody because he can fly the plane solo. I've seen him done it when he was doing sure. fight companions. I would go back and like rewatch everything, and oh, I would watch along with them. But uh, yeah, man, it's just so cool to see two dudes that just genuinely like you know talking about what they talk about. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely got to come out and see the set sometime. Uh, I'm Thank a big you. fan of old Dad Rock. Actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my man, um, as you mentioned, the last time you were on, I didn't have video in here. I think that you phoned in, phoned in, and that was a while back when you were um, doing mostly um, uh, stuff for Lozans. You were doing mm -hmm. a, their social media, highlighting their fighters, Joe and that gym. Uh, yep. You've grown, man. I'm, I had to be like four years ago. It was pre-COVID. Um, you know, you were doing your own business. Uh, I think you were, it was before you went into, I think Reebok you, you worked with yeah. or, or, uh, but it was all before that. So you've grown, yeah. you've grown immensely in that time as far as the MMA community and doing stuff. I mean, you did great stuff for Lozon, but that has branched off into the MMA community. Dude, let's, yeah. let, let's talk about that. how did you get involved with taking over that media and, uh, you know, doing your thing for uh, Cage Titans. Wow, I mean, like, 
first of all, you know, like we mentioned, it all goes back to Lozon. You know, uh, uh, that crew at Lozon MMA and Joe Lozon specifically, I uh, have a, you know, always a special space, space in my heart, man. And we came up there and uh, I was just the right place at the right time, man. Uh, I was there with Randy coming in, Marty making his pro debut, Pat Gilbride, uh, guys like Andrew Valdina and Dan Walsh hadn't even debuted yet. Uh, like am amateur Mitch Raposo, early Rob Font and Calvin Cater were coming through that gym. I mean, it was a crazy time and it, it introduced me and got me into a lot of great places. And uh, yeah, man, it's been crazy. And as far as the Cage Titans thing, um, so after Reebok and uh, I had actually uh, worked for Brendan Schaub and uh, Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell uh, for a cup of coffee at Mocha Media. Uh, it was during the pandemic. And once that ended, I just, you know, we remember like uh, we didn't know Cage Titans was coming back after pandemic. I mean, like you know, they weren't posting. There was no talks of it. Then the rumor got out about the no fan show and I just immediately, you know, like threw my hat in the ring. I was like, hey, if you guys need anything, let me know, because if it's a no fan show, you're definitely going to need social media and I'd love to come shoot it. And, you know, we got on board. We were making the plans for the no fan show. And then the fans showed up. We Everything <laughs> opened up. And then just from there, it just became this big snowball effect where Cage Titans just kept getting bigger and bigger with every single show. And we kept raising the bar every show and. Yeah, it's been a wild ride, and also I appreciate uh, Mike, uh, especially for allowing me to go out there, try to do my vision, and also make mistakes, because if you look at my work, there's definitely a couple mistakes out there mm -hmm. I, I've, I've definitely missed. What's all about. Yeah, and also just the input of Andy, all the great media people oh, yeah. that have been involved, man, I mean... Yeah, dude, I, I feel like the luckiest bum in the world. Like, I get to <laughs> sit cage side with my camera, and then I get to go on this platform and share it out with everybody. And then for some reason, people think I'm special. It's like, dude, I'm just, I just feel like I got to be there. Mm -hmm. Like, really, I feel like I got to be there. So I appreciate it all. I really do. Uh, but it, again, without uh, the guys setting up the cage, the fighters getting in the cage, the commission, uh, all the people that are involved with it, you know, who am I doing it for? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's about everybody else. It's not about me. <laughs> well, well, Nick, um, you mentioned that there was going to be a, a no fans show. Yeah, right. I didn't hear that. I never knew that. Right. Was that like hush? That was like, like I had no super idea. Super insider beans. All right, mm. super insider beans. So yeah. imagine that. that's pretty. That's pretty cool. That's pretty. We were damn talking cool. about pins. I'm sure Mike could go into more clarification. I'm sure more people are tuning in to hear from Mike tonight. Yeah. Uh, truthfully, like my favorite part of the breakdown shows for every show is when you go through the Instagrams. Yeah, and you I, just go I, one by one, post by post. Yeah, and, I have uh, that. We'll we'll click on that. Um, you know, toward the end here, and we'll go through. We'll show like the work of uh, you, you know, you and your crew and stuff like that. But Nick, you know. When you put your name in the hat, it wasn't um, hard to uh, see your work that you've uh, put out in the past. Because not only did you do stuff for Lozans at the gym, you traveled with the fighters that were fighting at Cage Titans, other promotions. But Cage Titans seemed to give us as media a little more leniency to, you know, travel with your fighters and get that 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 footage of them. And you did that with. Yeah. All the Lozon fighters that would fight for Cage Titans, you would follow them, give them like a documentary of their fight, something beautiful that you put together. So you have a lot of content out there that, you know, Mike definitely looked at and said, all right, this is definitely a, a guy that, that can get us rolling on the social media aspect. Um, yeah, definitely. And also, it's so funny that I went from making like documentaries and all these long form stuff to now I just make like seven and eight second reels and TikToks and highlights. Clips. I mean, like uh, Raph and Ed do the hard work of putting together those long edits and stuff. I do throw my hat in on some of this stuff. But yeah, the game has changed so much since I've been in it. And uh, the thing is, like, um, I tell people that want to work for Cage Titans because we're starting to add more to our team. It's all about, you know, first of all, you got to show that you want to be there and that you want to contribute. Everything that I shot for Lozons, I willingly and happily shared uh, with Gage Titans. And uh, anytime Mike, you know, ever asked for anything, I was always on top of it. And also the beautiful thing about Gage Titans, why I think it's a special brand is that, you know, it really is a much more community vibe. Everybody throws in a little something to make Gage Titans what it is. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, you know, Mike's adding what he brings and Andy brings what he brings. And then when we have Ken in the booth, when we have Richie going, I mean, there's just uh, even the people in the back. It's just it's such a cool community vibe that you don't get in any other sporting event. The only thing I can think of that comes close is like 
I don't know, like a concert or a band that everybody follows. And it's like, it's like, dude, you know, I, I hope these guys don't end up playing arenas and this doesn't like lose its cool, man. Cause I love seeing them in this small venue, you know, the gang's all here, we're the real fans. And yeah, it, it's like being a part of like a really cool band right now. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I, I think the and, venue makes a big deal on that since it oh, never yeah. changes as well. It's kind of like the home base. Well, having our, having the hall is it, uh, I remember uh, in they were talking about uh, a movie. It's like it's just like it's a character in the show. Yes. The hall is a part of it's the show perfect. just as much as anything else. And I think the reason why we go viral all the time is a lot of people are looking at the venue. It's like, where is this? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what is this? It looks like an unlockable level on a video game. It doesn't seem like <laughs> it, it should be it, real. It's a historical and building. Yeah, it's like it's like oh yeah, if you uh, get enough V bucks, you can buy this level. It, it doesn't seem like real <laughs> yeah, when you're in there, and yeah. then the acoustics in there are amazing. Yeah. Like again, like we all come out of the music scene, the music industry. I played a bunch of different venues. It, there's there's very little that compares with a fight night in that hall. Like, it, it stands up to any show I've ever seen in any in any genre. <laughs> Mm -hmm. hey, hey, Nick, you mentioned that, you know, you went from doing these, uh, you know, documentary, these long, uh, you know, kind of commercial type uh, productions to seven second clips. Man, that's not yeah. an easy task because you've got to catch <laughs> it at the right moment. And I think that's kind of something, you know, uh, Mark Delagrat, he does something on that sort of something like that. He lets the commentary and the camera angles kind of know the action and what's coming up. He kind of feels mm -hmm. when when the action or a finish or something huge is coming, that's not an easy task to, to, to catch the crowd, to catch that highlight. And it, mm. and you got to go through hours of video. I mean, and it's just not you. Like you said, you have Rafi, you have, you know, a photographer, you have, you have someone else taking video. You got shit going on in the back with the interviews. So you got a shitload of stuff to go through and produce in a, a short amount of time. Yeah, but, you know, like anything else, you know, you, you stay consistent with anything long enough, you just learn the patterns and your rhythms and, you know, it just becomes easier over time. And, you know, like, uh, 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 but also, again, like, we just have such great materials. It's hard to miss. Everybody in the world can connect with fighting. Like, anybody can appreciate a good knockout. So we have global reach. We know that. Uh, nobody in the fight game at all has the venue that we do, has the type of live and engaged crowd that we do. And, you know, I also don't think that any promotion in the world is as personable as we are because it's really just like four or five dudes. You can like, it's not like a nameless faces brand. Like, you know, if you're talking at us, we're not the UFC. We'll talk back. Yeah, Mike is definitely way, reachable. Like, you we, can reach we, out we and a touch connection him. with our fans. Exactly. Very personable as uh, you know, as a staff, everyone in there. And a lot of the staff are former fans. Yeah. You know, fans and fighters. Yes, ex exactly. Our, our, our motto has become fighters and fans first, which is actually, I don't know if you're like a Jesse Cole fan or Savannah Bananas fan at all, but their motto is fans first. And now they're blowing up the MLB's whole model because it's like a Harlem Globetrotters baseball game, mm -hmm. but it's all built around a fan first experience. And we were like, okay, well, we can be fan first, but what's more important is fighter first because at the end of the day, you know, this isn't baseball. This isn't hockey. This is fighting. They're... Uh, well-being, their mental well-being, their promotion, their appreciation, that always has to come first. And everything we do to build is to make things better for fighters and by proxy, you know, by fans. So that's really what's been driving us a lot lately. And uh, yeah, man, I think it's been paying off pretty well. So my man, um, when do you actually uh, start kind of uh, doing your thing for the next card? Like this card coming up right now. <laughs> all right. doing it all right yeah, so you, we're, we're not like there's no off season in fighting i right. don't get the, we might get an off day but even then i have to have something planned to go out for when i'm just sitting on the hammock or something like you know there's no time off there's no days off uh kate slightens is in it to win it every single day and we're also not just in it to win it for any other reason but it's like hey, every day we can give our fans something to enjoy uh, we can give them at least seven or eight seconds of, oh, that was awesome, or, oh, that was sick, or, oh, that made me feel good, or that made me feel emotional. We can give them that every single day, and I don't think that's asking much uh, of anybody. And uh, luckily, we have a library that goes back 13 years where we can pull so, so much, because people have given us so, so much. So it, it's really, it's one of the... E it's one of the hardest, easiest jobs in the world, because it's hard because it's every day, but it's easy because it's like, 
what, what else would I want to be doing every day? Mm -hmm. uh, Nick, I did play uh, like a video of uh, the Instagram and stuff. Is there, if there's something you want to go to specifically to check out, let us know. And I can uh, jump on it from your Instagram. But I did play like a, a minute and a half of a bunch of fight footage, uh, the the uh, the highlight video you guys just put out, or why you oh, cool. were, why you were talking and stuff. But if there's something you want us to check out, uh, th there's one thing about the highlight video I can't play it uh, with the sound. Yeah, the sound. The sound. The, the, yeah, exactly. They'll shut me down uh, in in a second. But um, uh, my... I would usually say it's we got to switch out that track, but it just went too hard. I'd be like, <laughs> screw it, we'll risk the strike. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? We didn't get strike. Yeah. So good. yeah, that's another thing. Like, I mean, you do. Is that happen sometime when you? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Most. Yeah. Of course. It's, it's much less frequent because now you can attach music through Spotify and, you know, that's actually a really good thing to do as a share point because now you have three points of shares. You have your hashtag, you have your media, and then you can add a mus add music to it and then anything that's shared under that song and say if it's a really popular song or a song that reaches the crowd that you're trying to reach, it's just another way to reach them. Yep. But, uh, yeah, for that yep. one, uh, it's embedded into the video. Uh, I assume that the AI would just pick it up and be like, hey, just re-tag it as the song that it is and give the rights to them. It's fine. But, yeah, like, we don't sweat that stuff too much anymore just because, again, like, Kate Titans has more internet freedom than any of these other promotions. We can make jokes. We can make mistakes. Yep. We can do things that other promotions would be like, what, why would they do that? Yeah. It's just like, because it's fun. And can chug beers. Nobody can tell us what to do. We're not uh, held down by VC sponsors or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we don't have a big corporate overlord hanging over our head. We're cage titans. We do what we like. Exactly. Uh, Nick, do you, um, do you see other, um, you know, promotions that mimic a little of what, oh, yeah. what cage titans is doing? 100%. 100%. 100%. Uh, 100%. But, uh, you know what? I, I like the Eddie Van Halen method. Just, you know, make stuff faster than they can steal it. <laughs> exactly. Sure. Exactly. And, you know, also like, you know, again, like, you know, I'm just keeping it with the 80s rocks references, but, you know, it's just like the same thing. It's like, hey, Eddie Van Halen would play his guitar away from the crowd so people couldn't see how he was playing. He wouldn't let people come into there. Like, people ask me, hey, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? It's like, nah, don't worry about Figure it. Figure it out. Doing it. Yeah. Don't worry about that. But, yeah, I see it all the time, and there's, you know, I don't mind it at all because at the end of the day, it's all in the name of getting better stuff out there for these fighters. Mm -hmm. Like I want to see everybody step up and put out the best stuff that they can put on the best shows that they can and keep raising, not just, you know, the bar, but raise the floor of MMA, you know, the entry level for this sport and coming in should feel like, remember here comes the boom in the first fight Kevin James had, and it was like the chicken coop and like all that garbage. Like, that should not be where MMA starts. It, Cage Titans is what it should feel like when MMA starts. And all these other regional promotions are also doing really good work right now. I have not a bad thing to say about any of them. I think they're all doing their level best to try to put out the best content that they can. The one thing is that we got that others don't is that we are Cage Titans. You can't recreate 13 years of history. You can't recreate the fan connections and the emotional connections we created. You can't recreate the consistency we've had over the last two and a half years. Yeah, we're just we're just really into what we do. And when you're into something, naturally, other people just want to get into it. So that's what we're all about. And as long as we keep doing our thing, as long as we keep enjoying it. And, you know, the last show was great because we got to really, like, get back to, like, hey, man, we went through some really hard stuff with Arthur passing. We've had losses before. It was it rocked everybody really, really hard. And I think last card especially was super cathartic. Everybody's emotions were pulling out. But the biggest thing is like, we were all just happy to be there with each other. And that's the biggest thing. It's that's, that's, that's like, we were coming into that card. It's like, how's it going to be? What's it going to be? Ended up being like, oh yeah, Kate's Titans forever. Yeah, this forever. <laughs> now, now Nick, um, are you looking for uh, new new people to help out or are you kind of solid with uh you know the team you have behind you or do you i i do you look for uh new people to come in and help out around uh around doing some media stuff oh yeah so uh actually on the last show i had big help from the hurt business podcast uh the hurt business podcast ross and uh he helped out a lot on the show uh we're looking to add more producers we're looking to add more shooters like uh, basically, I said the last show, like as far as like the content that I do, I can't do anymore. I need to clone myself. So I'll put it out there right now. I'm looking to clone myself, find another me for Cage Titans. If you think you can 
uh, learn what I do, want to learn what I do, or want to like kind of shadow me, uh, the position is open. Excellent. Good to Excellent. Know. Um, Nick, we got a couple of more minutes because uh, I want to just talk a couple of minutes with uh, Tommy before Mike comes on. But um, yeah, the main event. Mike, <laughs> gonna... Well, dude, <laughs> uh, we're gonna try to keep him to five minutes tonight. Yeah. <laughs> dude, let him go, man. Like he just spits gold, man. Don't, don't, don't. That's why we like having him on. Don't turn it off, man. So, Nick, um, how long have you been with uh, Cage Titans? Two and a half years. Uh, you know, two and a half years. This might be a difficult question. But out of those two and a half years, what are you most proud of that you have helped uh, Cage Titans with? You know what I'm most proud of? Um, Good question. You know what? Uh, the biggest thing, and it's not one specific person or moment or anything, it's every time the fighters come up and say, I love fighting here. I, I appreciate the way you guys treat us. I love the way that, you know, I'm presented. I love the stuff that you gave me afterwards. Win or loss, if, you know, the fighters all come up and said that they had a good experience and they would do it again and that they enjoy it. Like, every time that happens, it just fills my cup and I'm, like, ready to go again. And, uh, dude, I still think the best for Cage Titans is still yet to come. I still really think we're only just starting to hit our stride and the talent pool is only getting better right now. It's really, like, uh, after that last show, Ozzy Brody, the more kids are going to see that and be like, yeah, I, I got to go out and do that next. How I got to follow that because you think the bar can't go any higher and then it just keeps going up. Excellent, my man. And it will September. What's the date? September. I do have the poster. September 23rd. September 23rd. I have the poster, but I want to show it where Mike's here. Um, the, the main event there, Joe Giannetti uh, is back to defend that title. So that's going to be a huge night. Against Against the uh, French Canadian, yeah, uh, Canadian badass. I yeah. like that guy. Yeah, I we, like this guy. Yeah, we sh we showed that video earlier with him coming in, getting booed, and all that yeah. other you know, stuff. I actually, to say, jersey. I am probably most proud of that video clip more than anything else I've produced, just because it's like the first time I feel like I booked a pro wrestling angle. Yeah, definitely that. heel, definitely heel style. <laughs> Well, dude, it, it, the thing is, uh, the thing about a good heel is that the same reasons people hate him here is the reason people love him back home. Sure. He woke up all of the Canadian MMA yep. scene. Everybody's in on this fight. Uh, everybody in New England should be getting behind uh, Giannetti right now, and everybody in Canada should be getting behind their boy Mike. <laughs> Where'd he go? Oh, did we lose him? Um, we might have. He just sounded like it dropped. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. You still there? You still yeah, there? Man. Yeah. You, you, the last thing you said is everyone should be getting behind uh, this guy. Should, everyone should be getting Everybody behind. Everybody should be getting behind their guys. Like uh, the New England scene, get behind Giannetti, Canada, get behind Michael. I know he's French Canadian, so the Toronto and the English speaking people might have a little bit of a hard time with that. But dude, this guy's a gem. He, this guy's just a gem. He's a gangster for coming down to the hall and fighting a guy like Giannetti on, like, and going for that title. And I think Giannetti's going to have the biggest chip on his shoulder and uh, angry chip on his shoulder, Giannetti usually turns in some pretty fucking stellar performances. So I'm excited. And then we also got Ross Elton and Joshua Marsh for the heavyweight strap. And Ross is actually going viral on TikTok right now. And people have been calling him, I can think of a couple, Jamaican Tyson Fury. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is it? They keep calling him, uh, like, Goro. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. From yeah. Mortal Kombat. Fucking A. Yeah. I can see yeah, that. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And the thing is, you know what I love about Ross, Ross especially, is he carries himself so, so cool, yeah. man. Like, oh, look yeah. at the way he walked into that cage, man. Really walking, chin held high, shoulders back, being like, let's go. And I'm like, man, what a vibe. What yeah. a vibe this guy is. <laughs> Excellent, my man. Well, uh, you know. Cage Titans heavyweight champion, man. That's cool. Uh, definitely a, a, a force and a massive a man to promote that belt for you guys. So, man, congratulations, bro, on everything uh, the past two and a half years and the next uh, 20. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. And keep up the great work. I'm always listening, always watching. And, yeah, man, it's always love when we see each other. Yeah, uh, Nick, you know, most importantly, thank you so much for, uh, you know, sharing the con content and uh, getting us out there and helping New England MMA uh, yeah. grow along with you guys in the last uh, you know couple of years, man. It's uh, it's a pleasure going to the show and being treated so well, and uh, we love it. And uh, we'll be there on September twenty third, man, as always.
Uh, let's rock, man. Let's try not to both relapse that night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my man. Nick, anytime, man, you want to call in uh, as we get closer to the show. Uh, you're always welcome to come down. I know it's a trek, but, um, you know, if you got a, if you got a couple of guys who want to come on the show with you, uh, you're always welcome. Oh, we'll bring the crew through. <laughs> All right, my man. You have a good night, and uh, i got to get the boss going now. All right. We'll see you, bud. Later, Later Nick. Awesome. Hell yeah, good dude. Yeah, he's a really good... He's very well-spoken, too, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's smart. You can tell. Fucking A. Um, all right. So, that's cool. I got some guy on here on uh, on uh, on the YouTube channel. In chat. Uh, he's throwing some shade right now. What's he saying? His, his handle is just a guy. So, if anyone wants to go on YouTube and talk <laughs> to just a guy, he goes, Gee, a show on Cage Titans again. Change the room podcast to the Cage Titans podcast. <laughs> yeah, if they want to pass. You know what, buddy? <laughs> um, I'll just say one thing. My podcast is open every week for right. anyone who wants to come on, mm -hmm. and not many people open their fucking mouths to come on. So uh, you want to come on or you, you have some suggestions, get your boys to call me up on Messenger, and they're always welcome. Until then, Cage Titans is welcome every fucking week if they want to come on. And Cage Titans is good to us. They yeah. put our shit out there. Exactly. They're the ones who share so, our shit. Uh, with oh. that said, uh, Mr. Just a Guy. It's just a guy. Just a guy. Who likes guys. <laughs> that's so, uh, let me that's see a if, low blow. Let me see if Mike Polvere from Cage Titans is ready. Just a guy. <laughs> Andrew Valdine is laughing. <laughs> Andrew, find out who that fuck face is. It's probably Andrew's uh, nah, other he's handle. Just a douchebag. He's probably from fucking CES or something. <laughs> Meaning, me, speaking of CES, they blocked me on Facebook. Oh, so it's you like, know why? Uh, why? Because they spelt Gary Boletto's yeah, fucking yeah. name wrong I on the know. poster and Chris Motino's no, name all the names wrong, wrong on the poster. <laughs> Gary Boletto is their poster yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. That's their guy. <laughs> his dad was their guy. Oh, yeah. oh, he won the they trap. spelt his name wrong on the main event fucking poster and they didn't change it. And you know what I did? I put, I said, see, yeah. All I did was put on Facebook, CES needs a spelling lesson. <laughs> I got blocked. They blocked like, you. Like they don't look at, they, yeah. they watch my shit. Yeah, yeah. They, you know what I mean? It was quick. They don't share any of it, but they no. watch it. That's, that's for sure. That's so funny. I, yeah, I got blocked on Facebook by CES. And well, that's pretty stupid that they spell the names wrong. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sure people told him, but yeah. it's too late to change it now. We already paid the gay guy is 20 bucks for a fucking hour. Or 20 bucks. People. All right, let me get my pull now before I go on a fucking tangent. Mike Paul, we're keeping him to 20 minutes. What time is it? Almost it's 8.42. Yeah. That would, that, that'll that get us right to fucking mm -hmm. 9, 9.05. Nine I can get the karaoke. Said it oh, right. Going there tonight. Look, Aaron Hughes is laughing. Probably Zachary Searle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't like I. I love when that like you know I'm open to anyone sure. that can come out. unless you have fucking some zombie coming out of the woodwork. You're no, not and, getting on and my not show. many of that. You know, but you're not, you're not turning mean, down a lot of people, are you? No, no. Yeah, you just you're not down. No, you let anyone come on. Exactly. Yeah. Fucking people reach out to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Uh, Mike Paul there. He's uh he's not answering. So no. let me uh Maybe let me he's... go to Cage Titans Instagram <laughs> while uh while we're here. So uh good training tonight. Fucking beating the shit out of each other. Headlocks position. Starting in a headlock. That's always fun. Um. Last time you were here, you were in like what? Um, would you start in headlock? Headlock, yeah. So you did that last time. Yeah, so so yeah, we've been doing that. Oh, that's the sucky. Yep. That's King a, of the headlock. It's tough. That's a sucky. here. Just take my neck and and hold it. So uh, this is the this is the uh, video that Nick was talking about with uh, Roz going viral. I mean, he's just a he's he's he just he looks a like a fighter, man. Specimen of yeah. a man. Yeah. He looks like. Uh, he should be like in the fucking gladiator days or something. Um, what else we got here? It's committed to that hairstyle. This is um, Caged In Podcast. That was another thing I wanted to talk to uh, uh, Nick about because there's all these um, new podcasts uh, coming up. 
that are like really, really good. Yeah. They break down the fights. Mm-hmm. Um, Local? What's that? Local fights and stuff? Yeah, on yeah. Cage Titans. They, yeah. They're really heavy on Cage Titans and, oh, and helping them out. Um, but that has a lot to do with Nick. Nick making yeah. uh, connections. Sure. Behind the scenes, me. I mean, that just helps Cage Titans their their name get out there more. Uh, these more people, the more people that wanna, um, you know, cover them. Jay oh, Perrin, man. main event. He's um, he's back. Had his fight, and uh, he's gonna take a little time off, and mm-hmm. then uh, I think he might be coming back to uh, challenge Joe Penafiel for that. Uh, That'd be cool. That title, the party. unless it's uh, Johnny Cupcakes. But w- wasn't someone saying that? Um, saying what? That it's going to be Cupcakes versus Penfield? Uh, yeah, Mike. Um, Mike, I think was uh was saying it. Oh yeah, I'm not sure. Mike is ready. Cool. What's up, boss? <laughs> What's going on, guys? How you doing? What's I'm up? doing excellent, my man. Hey, we, uh, I don't know if you were listening or you were, uh, you know, playing uh, Family Man, but uh, Nick Halo, <laughs> Heiler was right. just on here. And, uh, man, he's a, he's a well-spoken young man, young <laughs> man, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. I will admit, I actually was doing bedtime and my phone died. And then I, I just turned it on at like two minutes ago and I was like, oh, shit, perfect timing. I'm supposed to be on the podcast. I just caught you... Uh, the tail end when you guys were talking about other podcasts that have been kind of busting on the scene as of late Shit. covering cage signs. I heard that you got blocked for CES for calling <laughs> them out uh, by their spelling errors. Uh, I thought that was a little funny. Ridiculous. I, I, I will admit, uh, you know, I'm not much of a, a shade thrower, but that was, uh, I'm with you, my man. That's kind of funny. Cause you know, if, if, if you spell it wrong on one thing, you think somebody might catch it. And then you wouldn't spell it wrong on the next thing. And it was like back-to-back things. It's like, wow, okay. But, I mean, it's all in good fun. It is, Mike. I mean, I can't help myself. You know, I'm, no. I'm that kind of guy. I could have made a meme, but I just put it out there. You know what I mean? I was just like, let me just put – because I'm not – like, everyone <laughs> saw it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, so why – just change it. And maybe it's too late to change. You know how it is when you pay for an ad on your business page – you can't change the picture. You have to take it down and redo it again. So, I mean, but they like you said, money. the second time around, you might want to catch it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny. Actually, Nick's the king of that. Nick is an infamous uh, misspeller oh, of things. And and he does it all the time. And I'll, I'll hit him up like, yo, dude, you, you spelled it wrong. And he's like, it already has 20 comments and 100 likes. He's like, I'm not taking it down. And Nick's actually a believer that the spelling mistakes bring more attention. Not that Nick, I think this is Nick's spin on it yeah, uh, to kind of take. cover his ass when he spells stuff wrong. But he says that it engages more because people notice the spelling mistakes and they pay more attention to it. And uh, they comment more about the spelling mistakes. So he's actually, he says he doesn't do it on purpose. I think that's just a way of covering his ass. Excellent. Yeah, I'm not man. buying that well, story. Well, I definitely don't do it on purpose. I just can't spell. And my <laughs> thing is, Mike, my my problem is I get so excited and my fingers go too fast. And sometimes <laughs> I like, you know, spell check sucks. And and then I like fucking double up a letter. And, and then I'm like, and then it eats me up all day. I'm like, what my the worst. Fuck? My worst is, uh, <laughs> I got to give a shout out to Bill Mahoney from South Shore Sport Fighting. Um, if you ever text message or, or go back and forth with him, like, he says right out the gate, he goes, listen, I'm rapid firing this essay of a text message to you. I'm not going back and mm-hmm. punctuating it nope. I'm, just, I'm spelling that checking way. it. He's like, you got to figure it out. You're on your own. Mm-hmm. And and if somebody watching has, has gotten text messages from Bill Mahoney, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Excellent, my <laughs> Uh, well, Mike, bro, um, we're giving you 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> well, well, just go. Back. Yeah, that's probably all you have uh, worth phone power, maybe. Um, you know, I actually I got my phone up to 51 percent. OK, so, so uh, I'm good. But right. I'm cool with 15, 15 minutes because we always say we're going to keep it yeah. short. And we never do. So let's do a hard nine o'clock. Nine right. o'clock. We're done. All right, my man. Well, Mike, man, you had a great card, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. Cage Titan 60, you had 
Jay Perrin, you had uh, Don Shanis come back. You had uh, a huge amateur title fight that, you know, potential fight of the year. Um, and nobody Leonard. lost in that fight. Definitely nobody lost in that fight. Uh, man, how uh, how happy are you with that card? It was a little more laid back than usual. A lot of stuff going on that weekend, uh, summertime vacations. But you still put it together, and it was a great card, man. Uh, you know, talk about it and how happy you were with uh, the product. Yeah, man. I think this was like a, uh, you know, you, you hear about like sleeper fights on a card. This is kind of a sleeper fight card. Uh, I'll be quite honest, like, you know, coming back from the doubleheader in March and then the huge, you know, heavyweight title fight and some of those big fights on the May card, you know, the, um, the, the party and all those things. Uh, you know, the Peter Barrett fight back in March. Like the last few cards have been pretty heavy um, with a lot of big names. And, and, and this card might have slid under the radar. Um, you know, there was a lot of matchups where guys were fighting people with upside down records. So I think that the the general public would look at this card and be like, ah, this is kind of a one sided card. But we've been we were preaching about it. It's like you don't fight on paper. Like the the people's records in MMA are are, you know, they, it's not indicative who they are as fighters. And I think that we showed on this card. Uh, you know, if if you watch this card and you saw somebody like uh you know, Pat Casey, who's 10 and five fighting a three and five guy in Sam Watford. You're like, come on, man, I'm not going to pay to go see this card. And we were telling people, you know, Watford went to a decision with Cameron Latchin off like a teammate of, uh, you know, Pat Casey, like this is, this is a fight to watch and sh sure as shit. Sam Watford comes in, pulls that win. Um, you know, you look at the Montreal James fight, who's four and nine, and he's fighting six and three Marty Navis. And people are probably like, Oh, this is a builder up for, Marty and I and I and I was talking about it in the buildup. Like Montrell's fought some tough guys in his career, and he's always the road warrior. And don't sleep on him. And, and sure as shit, he gets the finish. Um, you know. And then you look at the main event and the co-main event, both decision fights. But you know, you had two guys coming out of the UFC. One fighting Lionel Young, who's eleven and nineteen, and you had you know Wostig nine and thirteen fighting Don Shannis. You're probably thinking. All right, these are going to be a walkover fight, and both were highly competitive. Both had their shining moments in the fights, and uh, they were great fights. So I think this 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 card was was a, a pleasant surprise for those fans who know enough to kind of look a little deeper. Definitely, yeah, and uh, my, my boy Travis had the uh, his amateur debut with a sick rear naked choke. Uh, you know, put on a clinic for that. Everyone was really proud sweeps. of him for that. Yep, sweeps yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, that, so yeah, yeah. I, I think it was definitely one of those. Yeah, you had a lot of uh, younger, younger guys in there as far as like in their career MMA, some amateur debuts mm -hmm. like Travis, uh, and those guys put on a great show. Where'd Mike go? I'm right here. Yeah. Oh, all right, I lost your video. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, I'm here. All right, what are you doing? Uh, picking your nose or something? Oh. I don't know. I, all of a sudden, I, I, my phone was like texting, and I yeah, clicked all of a sudden on one and like, swipe it away. There you are. But anyways, go ahead. My yeah, guys. yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of up and coming uh, guys coming up. Uh, you know, would would you have? Did you have what? Did you have a grappling match? Yeah, you had um, you had um, George against um, Jeff Joy. Yeah. 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 So we had Jeff Joy versus Shane Darty open Joy, the match, Joy. uh, open the fight card. With the grappling match, and you know that's just Shane Darty trying to get back into the mix. You know he he was an undefeated amateur champion for us, who's been away for a long time. Uh, you know healing some injuries, and this was just kind of dip his toe back in the water of competing. And he took on a, a undefeated stud in Jeff Joy, who uh, was not competing, fighting on this card, but wanted to still compete. So uh, he jumped in there. Then we had the Muay Thai match. That was the very next match, and then we had a slew of. Uh, amateur fights before we went to the pros uh man it, the, the card really had a little everything it really did uh jalen brown was a was a, so a special uh guest from the boston celtics just signed two days after his uh he was spotted at cage titans he signed the largest contract in uh nba history Super max. 304 million dollars over five years uh it, it, that was a cool you know if you're a celtics guy but it's also kind of a cool thing for us at cage titans you know, from a marketing and, and a credibility standpoint, you know, we had the Boston Bruins at an event a few shows ago. So sick. You know, here, the highest paid NBA player in the history, you know, at a Cage Titans event. It, it, it definitely gives me like a little, you know, smirk and smile at the end of the night. Like, oh, wow, okay. 
we are doing something like we're doing something all right here we're we you know we're we're putting the wheels in the right motion yeah and another cool thing about going to you know cage titans and other local uh you know local promotions you have uh these fighters coming back from the ufc you know on the regional level trying to get back to the biggest shows but people don't uh, don't remember that when they were in the ufc they were training with these these ufc fighters and some of these UFC fighters are still their training partners, are in their corners in the regional level. We had Chris Curtis yep. yeah. as Jay Perrin's corner man. Now, I'm, I was with Jeff, uh, Jeff Clark. He's you know with us now. He does a lot of articles. But he doesn't know a lot of the fighters, um, or you know he hasn't met him. He knows him, but he hasn't met him personally. He met a few more on uh, Saturday night of Cage Titan 60. But Chris Curtis walked by, and I grabbed Chris Curtis. I was like a media, because I know Chris Curtis when he was the you know a champion here and uh, just a friend on Facebook. And, and when I seen him, I, I Chris Curtis is in the building. Yep. And I went, Chris, who are you here with? And he goes, I'm here with Mr. Perrin. And then <laughs> Jeff Clark was all over him. And then everyone jumped on him because I stopped him. He's, it's kind of hard to notice him and he's just walking through. Mm-hmm. But when you grab somebody and you're talking to him and other people kind of, you, you stop him for a minute and have other people, oh my God, that's Chris Curtis. That was a nice treat to have that guy walking through the crowd and in the corner at a Cage Titans fight. It's it's so funny like to see everybody get excited. Um, and I see some people get super excited and fanboy because he's a new face. But like, it's also a funny thing at Cage Titans because like we have UFC fighters cornering every every show. Like Joe Lozon is a staple, yeah. and uh, you know, you know, guys like that. And and so it's it, it is funny. But he's a new face that people have not seen in a while uh, here locally. Also, fun fact: he competed at Dana White's Contender Series against John Lally, a Cage Titans legend in his own right. Who wink wink might be making a return uh, coming up. Uh, he was in the crowd that night, so we'll, we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, man, it, it was, it was definitely cool. Um, I will say, uh, I apologize if Chris Curtis ever watches this. Uh, he was a late ad, like a late budget thing. Like Jay Perrin's a local guy now. So, you know, we're not even talking about flying corners in, we're not talking about hotels. So, uh, Chris Curtis was a, was a super gentleman, but it was like last minute Jay asked me and I'm like, dude, it's. I really didn't budget for this, but let's see what we can do. And then, you know, so we got him here. He had to fly on spirit. So I do apologize. <laughs> That's something I tried. I never really do to our fighters is bring him in on spirit, especially a six hour flight from Vegas. Uh, but, you know, you know, sometimes shit happens and, you know, Jay and I were already in the zone and, and it was like a last minute ad and it was like, all right, cool. Listen, man, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. But like, here's the deal, and and we got him here. It was cool, um, and and a lot of people reacted warmly to exactly. him. Exactly, yeah, it was I a good look. That, um, I think that the UFC fighters. I, I guess I, I'll I'll take this stance: is that like when UFC fighters come from other parts of the country. Eric Anders is another guy who came up with SBG. Um, you know, I, I think they're impressed with what we're what we're doing up here in New England, and they're impressed with uh, the venue, the atmosphere um and, and everything we're doing so it's nice to kind of get the nod from those guys like hey you guys are doing something well because clearly they've competed on their way up through regional scenes through other parts of the country so they see what regional promotions are like and then they come to cage Titans and they kind of give us the nod like hey man you're doing something really special here so it makes me feel happy excellent yeah, they want to come well uh cage titan 60 i had a ball there uh it was me and jeff running solo that night, uh, Travis and Lars had uh, had family things going on, but it was nice. Uh, my second card in a row that I've gone to, and I will com- continue to be going to Cage Titans cards and uh, you know enjoying the fights and the people there. Dude, Mike, second time I was there, and the guys, you know, the guys from the page bust my balls because I don't do much when I'm there. Maybe a couple interviews, but I'm not writing articles, doing play by play. I'm kind of just smiling, drinking a beer. Mm. But they're like, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the celebrity guest. They say they just shot me in front of, uh, in front of the the desk, and uh, I deflect the attention. Maybe a punch or a kick here and there. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of like they say, you're the face that gets punched before they get to us. So that uh-huh. that's kind of my role right now at, at Cage Titans as as media. <laughs> well, listen, man, I always enjoy it. Definitely 
gives it a different feel when you're there. Um, you know, you definitely become a, a, a integrated part of the MMA community here in New England. You know, and and it's great that you do get to enjoy yourself at those fights because you know, though you like you said, you might not be writing articles when you're at the fights. Like these weeks, like we're eight weeks out from our next show, and I know that for the next eight weeks, every Wednesday you're probably going to be talking something about cage times and, and, and putting the work in, in these eight weeks so that you kind of, kind of get to see some of the hard work pay off on fight night when you can kind of just sit back, relax and, and, and kind of take it all in. Excellent. Well, someone just gave us shit online and we gave yeah. them shit back. Yeah, I don't know said, if you heard before you came on, but somebody said something on the YouTube channel. Oh, uh, what'd they say? I gave I already, uh, what happened? they I missed said, it. Uh, just a guy. He goes, gee, a show on Cage Titans again. Change the room podcast to the Cage Titans podcast, he said. <laughs> I'm down. Listen, man, you know, I, I say this all the time, like, and, and I don't know how I'll spin it towards your podcast, but, like, we set the stage, and then what our fighters and the rest of the community do with it is on them. Make the moment yourself, like. You know, if we're, if we're giving you good storylines and we're giving you personalities and we're encouraging our fighters to talk to you and get on podcasts and, and, and do things like that, it's like, well, I mean, what else are you going to talk about right now? Like, realistically, I mean, you know, if we're, I, I don't say this arrogantly, but we're doing our best to kind of keep the MMA f boats, right, you know, the tides up here in New England for MMA. I took it as a personal challenge when COVID shut us down two or, you know, two or three years ago. Like, I am going to do as many shows with as many fighters to kind of make up for lost time. And, and we've been doing that for the last two or three years. And we're just kind of keeping that, that bar at that level. So, like, we're giving you guys stuff to talk about. And, and we're really getting into our flow because, yes, we could just sit here and talk about the last Cage Titans, which was Cage Titans 60. But now we also are already giving you new stuff to talk about with Joe Gianetti and Michael Dufort, uh, which I told you before the show we had a big announcement. That guy's ranked number nine in the in the world or the country who's as a lightweight not signed to the UFC. And talk about taking the stage in the moment and making it his own. The kid comes out, brings a paper bag in a three-piece suit, throws on the Canadian's jersey. He's playing it up to the crowd. That's some Boom, good shit. there you go. We, we already have something to talk about next week at, on the podcast if we wanted to. You got Ross Hilton, who's taking on Josh Marsh, who Josh Marsh has already beaten Ross Hilton. And there's already a storyline built in there. Uh, so we're really hitting our flow on on keeping things in the momentum flowing and in really trying to like build the brand out that there's always something moving with it. I think in years past, I would do one show and then once the show was over, it's like, all right, we're done. Let's take two weeks off and then like start the business back up again of trying to get storylines, trying to get fighters and, and, and then we'd do a show and everything would stop and shut down. Now it's like case sentence is kind of always going. I do take a few days off, but like we're already ma I'm actually already matching for November right now. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, I already have two matchups circled for November. Um, and we haven't even got to September yet. So that, I think that's the difference. And, and the guy who says, make it a case science podcast, like, listen, <laughs> let's talk about CES. They had an event this weekend, Richie Santiago, oh, so long there. time cage tides, cage Titans commentator made his uh, retirement, yep. and, you know, all the hats off to him. This kid was an 0-4 amateur at Cage Titans, mm -hmm. went on to win an amateur title, then went through his pro career through CES, all the way up to Dana White's Contender Series. He had his last fight um, this past weekend. Unfortunately, a loss. He retired. But this is, a, this is a testament to any fighter out there who might be having a difficult time, might have had a few losses. This kid was 0-4 to start his career. And fought in front of Dana White and a great pro career. So hats off to to Richie and uh, you know they had some other great competitors. Gary Belletto won his title in his hometown. You know Chris Mutino. So that you know, hey, listen, I'll give this some plugs. It's the Cage Titans guy getting out there to plug the other thing. <laughs> That's uh, right. But there you go. It's not just the Cage Titans of Room podcast. No. And we and we open up our lines to everyone, and no one wants to show up because they're scared. So. Well, well, Mike, yeah. Mike, I don't know if I know you see a lot. There's so much stuff on social media, but I, you know, I always put at least once a week 
Uh, every other week, I put on our Instagram stories, hey, anyone wants, any fighters out there that want to get an interview who have an upcoming fight coming up, um, you know, I'm here, message me. Dude, I see how many people check out. I mean, there's like 300 people that see our stories, maybe more sometimes. Yeah. And 60 to 70% of them are fighters. So the door is always open for there, for for them to call or be on the show. You know, I you know I love doing it, and and you know I love it. It's fucking, it's what I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you did it. You did a podcast last week about with Anthony Dormy, who yeah. made his 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 yeah. uh, amateur debut on CES. Yeah. So you know what? The haters are gonna hate. I'll tell you this. I just like you, I feel your pain. When I do uh, table titans on Mondays, we have fighters on all the time, or we 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 do the same thing. And people will say, oh, here's another Valdina post or, oh, mm. here's another, um, you know, X, Y, Z guy. And it's like, listen, man, this is open invite. <laughs> if if the, the people that you see on here, they're on here because they cu keep coming back and asking us to be on here. Mm -hmm. If you want to be on, just damn pick up the Instagram yeah, come on and message us like. I'm not going to beg. It's an open invite. So I do feel your pain. Uh, you know, we, we've both been podcasting for a long time. And so we have a lot of similarities uh, in our pains. Like I wish every fighter would want to come on. And unfortunately, some don't. And so you get the same like repeat customers over and over again. But it's like, OK, well, they if you are sick of seeing Andrew Valdina's face on a Cage Titans podcast or the room, who could ever it's be? like. Then go book yourself on one. Messages, yeah. hey man, I see Valdina all the time. You think I can get on? Yep, no problem. And it's done. So uh, yeah, there, there's our there's our minute soapbox between the two of us, uh, Steve. If you don't like the people that you continually see on our podcasts, then pick up the phone, quote unquote, and message us and just say, yo, I want to be on. And exactly, and it could be anything. It's it's simple. Hey, 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 last thing on that, Mike. Um, Billy Goff reached out to me a couple of days ago. Hey, when you coming down to the gym? I got a, you know, I got a fight this month. When you coming down to Dexter's uh, to get an interview with me? I'm going down Monday night. I'm going to Dexter's Monday, and I'm getting an interview with Billy and filming some of his team. I mean, it's that easy. You want, you know, I mean, I'm not going to run to everyone's gym or, you know what I mean? I have so much time. It's Billy Goff, you know, huge fight. But that's a, a UFC. That's a local kid that um, is reaching out to me. You know what I mean? To, to get an interview. So, I mean, why, you know, some of you uh, younger guys do the same. But uh, one last thing on that. Mike, also, it's it's who shows you the respect back, too. Like, Cage Titan shows me an immense amount of respect, sharing my stuff. The show's total respect there. There's other promotions that, you know, treat me similar. They're not as big, but they give me the respect and share stuff. 50% of the other promotions, man, don't give me the time of the day. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like it's hard to focus on them when you're doing interviews with fighters for that that show and they're not giving you – they're not helping the fighters at all not sharing that stuff. I mean not every one of my interviews sucks. A lot of them do. <laughs> but some of them some of them are passable for you know some of these promotions to, to support these fighters because I, sometimes I'm the only one doing an interview for this, this card or these promotions. So you know what I mean? It goes both ways here. Yeah, you know, you bring up some great points. One, on the Billy Goff thing. Billy Goff, and when he wasn't in the UFC, you were incredibly good to him. You always He did podcasts. You always did podcasts with him, and he always was a guest on your show. Those Dexter's guys were amazing to you. So now that he's in the UFC, of course he's showing that respect back, and, and you were with him when he was, I don't want to say a nobody, but when he was just a local guy. So, of course, he's going to remember that, and, and you go on the way up with him. Now he's in the UFC. You're going to be one of the guys that are exclusively interviewing him. Um, on the second part, it's just business, if people don't understand this. If, if, if Steve's doing a podcast, you're doing a podcast, and you do it with the fighter, your goal is that that fighter's going to share it, the promotion he's on is going to share it, and you, you feel that there's some... Uh, you're getting some traction for the work you did, you know, that, yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, you love this and you're going to do it anyways, but there's also some sort of traction and, and pat back when you interview somebody knowing that they're going to share it and the promotion is going to share it. So your work gets more views and gets more legs and, and it lives on out there. If you know, Hey, I can do an interview with say a cage science guy 
and Mike's going to share it. And Nick's going to share it. And it's going to get on the pages. Plus the fighter is going to share it. Cause they, they kind of instill that in their fighters and you might get 2000 views, but promotion X, Y, Z who never shares your stuff and they don't really push their fighters like that. You're only going to get 300 views. All right. You got an hour to do a podcast this Wednesday. What person are you going to interview? What fighters are you going to, what pool of fighters are you going to go to the promotion that pushes that stuff and instills that in their fighters as part of the overreaching of, yes, you're an MMA fighter, but you're an entertainer. You're, you know, you got to talk, you got to get on the mic, you got to in front of the camera. And we pitch that to all of our fighters and, and make sure they're aware of that or the promotion that probably won't ever share it. And Spell their fighters drawing. aren't even really pushing it. It's a no brainer. Exactly. Exactly. Um, always have haters out there, Mike. Uh, of course. But I don't care anymore. Feed me haters. <laughs> I eat that shit. I don't. I don't care unless they say something when I'm live, yeah. and I gotta like call them out. And, and Andrew right. Valdina uh, is feeling away because you know you were using his name and saying you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, We'd like to. He's thinking, he's thinking how he's shut off from Table Titans. Yeah, now. He's yeah. Like, no, man. no, he's a man. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> ramp up the Andrew Valdina posts. No, I, I I just use him as an example. Oh, of course, because he's a great example. He's the face, of an up and coming days. fighter. Yeah, who is under the Cage Titans, you know, banner that like people have said to me. They're like, oh man, you 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 know, when are we gonna get the Valdina treatment? And I, you know, I'll pump <laughs> him up a little bit, and it's like, dude. This mother effer got, gets it. Yeah, maybe when you beat the shit out of people like him, he does. We didn't tell him to pull out the imaginary sword and pretend he was slaying his opponent. He did that. We didn't tell him to jump up on the cage and get that great photo of his family and fans screaming in the background. He just did it. You know, like, <laughs> he, we don't tell him to post all of his training clips. He just does it. Like, he's just a good example of a guy that's out there right now that – you know, is is when people say, "Oh, well, he gets posted about a lot." It's like, well, you know, Connor Matthews is another guy. That mother effer po posts all the damn time. <laughs> you know, Peter Barrett was another one that just Joe Giannetti. These guys just post all the time. Mm -hmm. Then you guys got like guys like Marty Navis. You might get one post a month yeah. from, and it's like, yo, man, we we love you. Or Zach DiSabatino, who doesn't post at all. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yo, we love you guys. Um, and when people say, "Why don't we see stuff from them?" It's like they don't even post about themselves. Yeah. We can't get stuff to post if you don't post stuff. If you post a video of you rolling at the gym on Tuesday afternoon, guess what? Now we see it, we have access to it, and we will post it. If you're not doing that, there's no way for us to post it. There's no way for us to get it. We're not in every single gym every day of the week yeah. for all these fighters. So, uh, soapbox done, Valdina. You're doing a great job if you're watching. <laughs> uh, awesome. And, it, it, you know, and, and, and I said it about him last fight. He wasn't fighting this past card, which is the first time in a long time. He immediately reached out and was like, I know I'm not fighting on this card. If there's any any spots in the commentary booth, I want to keep my name out there. I want to keep my name active. I want to keep in front of the mic. And boom, he did a, he, he did an amazing job commentary. Just like you said earlier, you want to be on the Rooms podcast? Reach out to Steve. Yep. You want to do something with Cage Titans? Reach out to us. We're, we're, we're not that difficult to, to, to work with or get in touch with. Excellent. Or maybe I'm a little difficult. Well, you, you got a <laughs> you got a heavy heavy workload there, but you do get back to you do get back. I know you do. Um, yeah. Well, Mike, um, you know we are 13 minutes beyond uh, beyond the <laughs> the threshold here, though. Last thing, Mike. I mean, you have this card coming up September 23rd. Uh, you mentioned Joe Giannetti. You mentioned um, Roz Hilton. Uh, you mentioned uh, you know you have fights scheduled for. November. As far as this card coming in um, in September, September. Let me get the the twenty third. Uh, September twenty third. Um, what's your expectations of this? I mean, Joe Giannetti always a seller on the card. Uh, this fight could be the one. We always say that to get him to the UFC uh, to get over that hurdle. Um, but what are you thinking about this card and the magnitude compared to past cards? I, I think that this is going to be. Um, a, a great card. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the very early stages. You know, we have the Ross Hilton fight. We have um, the Giannetti fight. Uh, I know Miguel Sebesson will be making his pro debut on this card. Potentially we'll have a Sean Lally sighting, yeah. um, you know, and then some names from the past card, Sam Watford wants back on, um, you know, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some other names. Uh, Zach DiSabatino actually will be back on this card. Um, 
I kind of took last week off. You know, usually the week after the show, I try to take off and, and kind of refocus on my family and my wife and my kids. Um, I think that's important for all people to do in the hard fight world. You know, Cage Titans fighters, like after the fight, take a few days to yourself, reground yourself. So I always do that. Um, here we are Wednesday. I've already started collecting names from gyms. Um, so I'll start matching probably end of this week, beginning of next week. So maybe I'll pop back on in a few weeks. I'll break some fights, spill some beans for you. And, yeah. uh, but yeah, this card will be the end of the summer banger, man. It's, it's this card. I, I said it before the show. I think the fight, this Joe Gianetti fight versus Michael Dufort, uh, is, is going to be a big fight. It's going to get some national headlines, I believe. And, and I think that when I spoke to Giannetti about this fight, it was like, listen, man, you know, this is a fight you got to take. I know this guy's super tough and I know this guy is next level potential, but this is the type of fight you got to go out there. You got to fight and you got to win. If you think you're going to get to the next level, if you beat this guy, and you don't get signed to the UFC. Shame, I, I shame on them. Shame on them at that point. Yeah, there's there's really nothing else you can do. There really isn't. You know what I mean? It's like this this is that type of fight. And I think the same thing with Dufour. That at ten and four, eleven and four, ranked ninth in the in in the in the country, um, has a lot of hype behind him. A lot of name recognition. He took out Lewis Pena in his last fight, an ultimate fighter, same season as Joe, actually. I, I, I think if this guy can put a second feather in his cap like that, back-to-back, -back, uh, ultimate fighter uh, alumni guys, UFC guys, um, he'll, he's no doubt he'll be not only taking the Cage Titans belt back to Canada, but he'll be taking that Cage Titans belt back to Canada for a brief stop before he goes on to the UFC, uh, which would be immediately after. I know he has the right management team behind him as well. Um, he's represented by Danny Ruby. So he's very well connected to the UFC. So I know this guy's on the UFC's radar as well already. So I just think this this fight, there's no doubt in my mind the winner of this fight will get some sort of UFC offer after it. And I think the fight of that that magnitude uh, happening at Cage Signs, there's a lot of times when we said, oh, yeah, maybe one or two more wins and this guy you know, might get signed. This is the fight that it's like the winner of this has to go to the UFC. There's no if ands. Or butts. There's nothing else for either one of them to prove, no matter who wins. And I think that's nice to kind of uh, get that type of high level fight um, under our banner and, and under our our uh, promotion. Well, my man. Uh, last thing I'm going to leave off on here. Uh, you're still matching fights. I I expect for uh, this card coming up uh, with amateurs and you know pros. Well, we uh, we are adjusting our rankings right now. So our rankings are coming out next week, as far as uh, the summer rankings up until, uh, you know, the, the, the CES card. Uh, so that's going to help, uh, maybe not you as far as matching, but it's going to get the chatter going uh, between fighters and who should be matched up maybe uh, after this card or coming up to this card or other promotions, man. Uh, when rankings come out, does that help a promotion at all? Uh, if they come out early enough that, you know, or do you already do you already kind of know what 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 you're looking for? And uh, you are Mike, you're a smart guy. You know you know guys' records and you know where they should be in the lineup. And uh, but does that help at all to look at it on paper? Is it more for the fighters to to rant and rave and and have some have some chatter online for? Uh, I, I love to promote your site and talk about how much I Don't pay attention shit. to the rankings. Don't do shit for but, us. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry. I do look at them, but they don't mean that much to me. All right. um, I think the fighters love it. They love to see their names out there. They love to see their rankings. They love to kind of see where they are in the pecking order in New England. Great, Some them. people put chips on their shoulders. Some people, they don't give two shits about the rankings. You know, and and so I, I love to see it, and it's fun banter, and it's kind of fun to go through it, but... You know, there's not really ever a point in time where I look at your rankings and go, oh, that guy's ranked number one. I better get him at Cage Titans. Listen, my net is open to every fighter, whether you're ranked one or you're ranked 20 or you're not ranked at all. Like, you know, if you want to fight for us, you want to fight for us. Um, the matchmaking comes from me. If I think it's a good and, and marketable fight, I'll make the fight. 
You know, like I, if I looked at the rankings when I match up Lionel Young and, uh, you know, Jay Perrin, people probably laugh at me. But I'm like, listen, that's a marketable fight to me. I don't care what any rankings say. I know the type of fighter Lionel is, and I know the type of fighter Jay is. I don't care what their records are, what their rankings are. When we talk about fights, we talk about the attributes of the fighters and why you want to see this, and as opposed to where they're in the rankings or what their records are. It's just some, it's, it's an approach I take. Uh, so for me, it doesn't help, but I promise you, there's probably a lot of other promotions out there that love the bells and the whistles and say, I got the number one ranked guy, or I got this guy. You know, For us, it doesn't help necessarily, but I think the fighters love it, and I will say I am an avid reader of your rankings, and I do enjoy looking at them. Excellent, man. Well, um, just a disclaimer here. Five of us put these rankings together, mm-hmm. and we dis- did did dis- disagree on some things. But, you know, the majority rules. So well, do good, not he, hate us I, I was gonna say, Polver said, <laughs> when they he, come out. He just said he doesn't care about your rankings. I'm anyway, not talking so. about him. I'm talking about <laughs> fighters. You know how it is. I mean, uh, you know, it's all – I'm the face of the page. Domenico, he did it. No, I'm going to say – there's some of you that may not be where you want to be, but I might have wanted you to be where you think you should be. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's deep. Well, I will tell you this. Back in the day, as you know, when you guys first started rankings, I was on one of the email groups that was part of the voting for your your rankings. Uh, you know, so, yeah, I, I think it's a fun thing, and, it, and it's fun to debate. Um Rankings are an interesting thing, though. Like, look at right now. Sean Strickland, who's ranked number nine, might be fighting for the title against Israel Adesanya. Yep. And it's like, how's the nine guy fighting the champ? Yep. It, it, it's it's a fun thing when nothing else is to talk about. But then it's just like, then at a certain point, it's like, cool. We have matchups now to talk about. So that the, the rankings games. But uh, fighters, if you need it as motivation, dude, use the motivation. You want to have a pecking list and say everybody above me? And come to me and say, yo, Mike, you know, fighter two, three, and four above me, I want those guys. I'll t- I'll work that into the story uh, by all means. Um, you know, so, yeah, whatever. I, I wish I can't wait. When are they coming out, actually? Um, give it a plug. Well, we did, we did the pros yesterday. It took us three hours uh, together on our group chat. Uh, we're still tweaking it a little bit because there's always something we miss. Uh, so the pros are basically done. We're going to do the amateurs over the weekend. And I would say, uh, you know, Lars going to play with the posters, get them. I would say by the end of next week, uh, they'll probably be out. All right. Well, I, I, I look forward to seeing those. And, uh, you know, I appreciate your time tonight, guys. Sorry, I'm always long-winded and I always stay over time. But, Never. you know, I appreciate your time. I appreciate everything you guys do. I'm glad you enjoyed the show. It's always nice having you at the shows. And, uh September 23rd, man. Let's let's uh, let's Let's rock it out and um, have another good one. Excellent, Tommy. I'll be taking him to that show. He's gonna be my uh, he's gonna be my wingman that night. So are we gonna gonna break? Are we gonna break his cherry? We are gonna. Yeah, we're gonna pop his cherry. Yes, I've been to Cage Titans plenty times before, but not with you. Media though. You're gonna. That's a. It's different. You haven't been as media, and you haven't been as Steve Dominico's plus one. (laughs) Hey, wine and dine me. I'm a cheap date. He's a purple belt in jujitsu, so I can use him. Yeah, I'm a cheap date, man. Wine and dine me. You know. Hey, Mike. Anything you want to leave off with? as far as you know the card coming up or anything before i let you go no nah, man i just as always i say this all the time follow us on our social media uh we, we we try to keep it constantly flooded you know so cage titans across the board twitter threads now tiktok snapchat facebook instagram all that stuff make sure you follow us youtube as well um you know stay up to date that's the way of the world now hit us up on all our social media and, and and we do a good job keeping you updated. We'll make sure you keep you updated, and uh, we'll see you at the fights, and or we'll see you on the room in the upcoming weeks. That's right. Last question, Mike. Uh, table, <laughs> table Titans uh, is uh, is that scheduled to come back in the next uh, yeah. couple of weeks or so? Or? Yeah, so we'll be back this upcoming Monday. So for the summer, uh, admittedly, I I took some time off this summer because man, I'm always long winded. So I'm yeah. going to keep it quick. When we got <laughs> when we were shut down for COVID, I did a podcast about how important it was to really inject life when we could start doing shows because there were so many fighters that their careers were on hold and standby. Mm-hmm. Guys like Mitch Raposo, Don Shanus, there were so many guys that like all of a sudden like COVID just 
like they were getting so like like they couldn't fight. They needed they were like a couple fights away from the UFC, but then they couldn't fight because there was no fights, and, and people really couldn't progress their career. So I think for the last two plus years, I was go go go. We were doing double header shows, add in shows. This summer, I, I it was finally like the first time after that May event, after we did the double header in March, which wasn't not scheduled, and we just did it on a whim. I said, you know what, I got to take a quick step back this summer. So uh, we did take t- Table Titans off the table for the summer, but we will be back next Monday, and we're going to be full bore back every Monday, um, you know, for the rest of this upcoming card, and we'll be back to our normal Monday's time slots, uh, eight o'clock every Monday. Excellent, my man. Well, I'll definitely come sit on sit in on one of those Mondays. Uh, September, actually September, um, I stopped playing cards on my uh, Hilo Jack League on Monday. So, um, like the first, the, yeah, I'm with it. Yeah, um, right. You know, so the first week of September. So uh, maybe uh, you know, last last week of uh, August, I can come on because you'll have a lot of matchups and shit like that. Yeah, maybe we'll get you that last week before you play cards. So we'll we'll have you play, we'll have you both down, have you sign the wall, do all that stuff. So Fuck yeah. there you Excellent. go. All right, Mike, I'm gonna let you go, man. But a pleasure, bro. It's all always right. it's always great talking to you. It's a great conversation, and uh, I thir- yeah. I thoroughly enjoy talking, uh, you know, local MMA and Cage Titans with you, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and let me give a quick cheap, a cheap plug. Um, Ken Moy and myself have started a new show. Uh, we've been doing it for the last few months. We do TikTok Tuesday. So if you're on TikTok, me and Ken Moy go live every Tuesday at 12. It's the 12 at 12. And much like your show, we say it's 12 minutes at 12 o'clock every Tuesday. It ends up being like an hour and 12 minutes. <laughs> Ken Moy is so intelligent on so many yeah. aspects of the MMA world and in the inner workings and in and, and his breakdowns. And him and I have just great conversation every Tuesday on TikTok Live. So uh, tune in over there and check us out. Excellent, my man. Mike, uh, definitely a pleasure, bro. Uh, thank you for the time, man. And uh, we'll be watching Cage Titans, seeing uh, you know all the developing stories and uh, matchups coming up in the mm-hmm. future. All right, my man. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one, guys. All See right, you later. Yeah, yeah, bro. Later. Fucking awesome. Always good. Oh, my God. Always fucking good. Um, so just to plug our rankings, <laughs> mm-hmm. they will be out, I would imagine the end of next week. And, uh, like I said, the pros are basically done. 95% done. We have to tweak a little things here and there. Uh, but we will be working on the amateurs over the weekend and they should be out by, uh, the end of the next week over the weekend mm-hmm. and the posters will be coming out. Cool. And, uh, like I said, there's five of us that did it. And, you know, we agreed on a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. but there's some of us that thought other people's were, you know, mm-hmm. but that's... It's natural. That's what's great about it. Mm-hmm. There's five of us and, you know. But uh, with that said, man, people, it's all for fun. And uh, thank you so much, Tommy. Is, Is there it? anything you want to leave off with no, tonight? No, just uh, everyone from my gym who fought over the last weekend and the past two weeks fucking killed it. <clears throat> a lot of Triforce guys... On CES, pretty much every fucking card was a Triforce guy. And then, like, uh, Travis over at uh, Cage Titans and, you know, just fucking kill it. Excellent, man. Well, uh, congratulations to all the fighters over the weekend, yep. like you said, all that fighters. had wins. Mm-hmm. Um, wins, losses, uh, or draws, Mike man. Everyone fight. With yep. his, uh, he had a knockout, his pro debut. Richie Santiago, we yep. wish you the best, the best, man. We know you're uh, bringing fighters under your wing right mm-hmm. now yep. as far as helping them with their careers. Great you have training a, partner. You yeah. have so much knowledge to, to help these guys and girls along with their careers. Also, Richie, we are always open for you to come here on mm-hmm. a Wednesday night mm-hmm. and co-host with us in the podcast Love room. That. You want to come every Wednesday, any Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, you are always welcome. I know you train with Tommy yep. uh, on Wednesday nights, so you ever want to come down here, I know you're going to be an integral part of Cage Titans also moving for, for, uh, forward. Uh, so congratulations and all the power to you on uh, you know your future endeavors, kid. Absolutely, you know I mean? Richie. So uh, with that said, with that said, Tommy, you're uh, done. You're done talking. This for weekend, that night. I do have my little drum. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rock concert. We'll call it a concert. My concert. My yep. uh, my kid. What was it called? Recital. Recital. Nah. <laughs> Recital. You're gonna have your little tie yeah, on. Yeah, I'm gonna record it. Yeah. You might not see it. Go live. Record it. 
Not going to lie. <laughs> not going to lie. Never. Uh, so with that said, Never. thank you so much. Next uh, next Wednesday, we do not have guests yet. Not so yet. if you would like to be on the podcast. Anyone from Cage Titans, come on in. Yes. <laughs> if you'd like to come down next week, we always have an open seat. And you, if you want to call in, just hit me up on Messenger. Uh, you know, you just can't be just some schmo uh, training in the gym and want to get some air. That's how I came in. You're gonna have an amateur fight or two come in. You can't be like oh and twelve. I, I, you know, I want to get to you, but you know, it's you know, <laughs> unless you're a comedian on the side and make me laugh my ass off. <laughs> there you go. You're not coming on. Yeah, yeah. Right. You gotta bring uh, something else to the table. So with that said, uh, great being back, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, glad to have you back. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. Hyler. Oh, yeah, it was great. Nick Hyler, you were great tonight. I wish you had. I had you on longer, but you knew Mike would uh, take the whole show over. We'll get him back on here for oh, some, some deep dive shit. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and thank you, Mike Polvere, as always, nope. uh, for giving us the time. And thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Uh, for a great show. Always and thank nice. you for uh, following us. Uh, follow watching? us at New England MMA everywhere. Everywhere. Just uh, Google it. We'll show up. Follow the Room podcast on uh, Twitter. Facebook, um, and uh, IG, and I'm um, everywhere uh, uh, on uh, Spotify, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you uh, next week. Peace. Bye.